Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing, as usual, tech news which has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with a Gigabyte and the RX Vega lineup because we have specifications and images of their card. Then we're going to move over to Intel because we have information regarding Coffee Lake. This includes, but not limited to, specifications of the 8350, the 8100, and also the 8700K, including some rather nice benchmark results, might I add. And finally, Intel have also announced the date where all of this is going to take place, when we're going to see the full unveiling of their processors. But first things first, let's start out with, well, AMD and the Vega lineup, courtesy of... Da, 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 gigabyte. So, so before I forget, I'd like to thank Reese for sending me over these particular links. So, uh, I have to admit, and obviously it's all preference, but the cards do look fairly nice. They do stick fairly closely to the reference designs, as you'll probably guess. But with that said, there are a couple of subtle nuances. So what we have here so far are three different variants. We've got the water cooling version, and up with the water version. We have the six gigabyte, uh, sorry, sixty-four eight gigabyte variant normal, as well as the silver. So what are the differences and specifications? Well, essentially they are almost identical. In fact, to say almost identical is being actually not genuine at all. They are basically identical to the fact that they are identical. For example, you have the same base clock, the same boost clock for the air version, the water cooling version as well. Well, this is also ex exactly the same. Interestingly, the power supply requirements, yeah, a thousand watts. So uh, hopefully you've budgeted accordingly for the PSU because that not be cheap to run, I can tell you that. Um, but anyway, it's 1406 megahertz for the base, uh, 1677 megahertz for the boost. Looks, to be honest with you, quite similar to that of the standard AMD variant, which is not too surprising at all. Essentially, we are just looking, of course, at very subtle uh, changes from the standard uh, AMD reference design. A couple of things before we jump ahead to the uh, Intel related stuff. Um, I'm just going to once again reiterate that if you are considering buying Vega, wait for you know performance results. But personally, I would suggest maybe waiting even a little bit after that. Wait for the custom, the very custom versions of Vega, because obviously we're not going to start seeing those, you know, kind of in the September, October time. The reason I'm saying that is because we're going to have a much better understanding of perhaps whether the uh, AIB versions of Vega are going to be, just to be honest with you, better at maintaining higher clock speeds. For example, let's say, and obviously I'm just pulling numbers out my butt here, but it's possible that uh, AIB versions might be much better at holding the 1600 or maybe even 1700 megahertz boost speeds than reference designed, but once again, I don't really know that because no one knows that because we've not actually got those cards to play with yet. And I have a feeling even AIBs don't know this fully. And lastly, we're probably going to have a much better understanding to what the drivers are going to be. And maybe even we'll see uh, NVIDIA price cuts. Hopefully, however, we're going to have a very, very competitive season from AMD because I really want them to. Because obviously, Vega is a bit late to say the least. So I don't want them to kind of release this card and then NVIDIA pretty much just rabbit punch them with major price cuts or, you know, release drivers which improve performance even more. But I don't think they could. I mean, Pascal's pretty old now. So with any luck, we're going to see quite a competitive season from AMD and by, of course, season, I mean the next several months until we have the inevitable refreshes. So moving on to Camp Intel and we have further confusion with our friend and buddy, the Coffee Lake series. So we have specifications of the 8350 and 8100 and also supposed leaked performance results of the 8700K. We'll start things out with the 8350 and 8100. So it appears that these are quad-core processors. But with this particular leak, which comes to us from a website by the name of PTT, they tell us, yes, it's four processor cores. So that's a good thing. Obviously on 1151 package, blah, blah, blah. 
No mention on clock speed yet, and that's for whether it's turbo, dual core, or quad core variant. Overclocking cable is yes on the 8350 because obviously you've got multiplier unlocked. I'm assuming the other ones would be technically overclockable, but it's going to be, you know, via FSB, so good luck with that pretty much. However, here's where things get nice and confusing because this particular leak tells us that Intel hyperthreading technology is no. So, it's getting weird because we've had a couple of reports that it does have hyperthreading technology. A couple of sources have said, yes, it does have hyperthreading technology, therefore four cores, eight threads. This report tells us, no, it doesn't. So at the moment, I just don't know what to tell you. Um, the earliest report is that, yes, sorry, a report just yesterday said it does have hyperthreading support. This leak tells us it does not have hyperthreading support. I... I'm at the point where I'm kind of inclined to believe it does not have hyper-threading support. I have a feeling what the lineup is going to be. It's going to be i3 is four real cores, i5s are probably going to be six real cores, and i7s, you've guessed it, six real cores, but with hyper-threading. Who knows? There could be some crossovers, though, just like you have with Ryzen, where you've got that, that kind of weird ground, um, you know, how you've got some with... Uh, four cores and some cores with four cores plus SMT on the low-end Ryzen. So maybe that will be the same thing for Intel. Who knows? It really, I guess it depends on how much pressure Intel really feel themselves under. Oh, also we have images of the 8700K. And perhaps more interesting of all, we have information of the supposed, supposed, I want to stress that one more time, supposed performance of the 8700K. So this is only a CPU-Z image. Now, it doesn't necessarily provide us any information, in reality, of what the processor is. Um, it could be anything. And obviously, it could be Photoshopped anyway. So it could literally be you know anything under the sun. But it's scoring essentially 14,000 for multi-thread, with the single thread performance being just over 2,300. That's pretty interesting. I mean, a 7700K generally... Um, would probably be beaten by around four and a half thousand points, roughly. Obviously, it does depend on the rest of your setup. So that's pretty damn impressive in terms of multi-thread. Um, and to compare this to like a Ryzen 1600X, for example, you're looking at the low 14,000s for that. Obviously, the normal caveats as well, like memory timings and clock speeds and all that stuff. So that's pretty impressive. It looks like, at least in CPU-Z, Intel have essentially a system... With the same, with this particular processor, the 8700K, which should roughly hit 1600X, but it is only CPU-Z. And obviously other applications, for example, gaming, whether, um, 3D Mark, Blender, uh, God knows what else, you know, City Bench, they could be entirely different stories. Intel could get absolutely decimated, or they could absolutely ruffle stomp AMD. So, as usual, um, it's going to be a very interesting couple of months while we wait. Or is it going to be a couple of months? Because here comes the next story. <sighs> AMD are just kind of in a rock and a hard place at the moment. Intel, I'm sh sure that this is completely and utterly a coincidence. But Intel have just revealed a reveal, which is seems to be how the internet is going recently. On August the 21st, Intel will unveil the 8th generation Intel Core family. And this is going to be via Facebook Live, of all places. Okay, not the normal way to do it, but okay, I'll go with that. Watch as two exciting moments align, the great American solar eclipse and the unveiling of the Intel's most powerful fan process. I've got news for you. If you could watch the solar eclipse, I'm pretty sure you're going to be watching that and not a process on unveil on Facebook. That's just me. I mean, I'm not in the path of the solar eclipse, but I know if it was between watching the solar eclipse or, you know, watching uh, an Intel processor reveal, and I don't care what the reveal is, it could be NVIDIA's new bloody, you know, uh, Volta architecture, and I'm still not going to be bloody watching that when I could be watching an eclipse, but that's just me. Anyway, so don't be caught in the dark, they say. Learn how the 8th generation of Intel Core processors will offer blazing fast performance. Blazing. Blazing. Uh, here directly from Gregory Bright, who is a senior, senior vice president of the client computing group, and discover how immersive uh, experiences will bring you from spectator to participant with the eighth generation of Intel Core processors. So don't worry, 
previously with Intel's seventh generation, you were just you were just a spectator. But with this, you will now become a participant. So you weren't really playing the games before. Don't worry, but you will be now. I, I assure you, or they assure you. And so it's my job to assure you because of their press statement or something. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like, I want the eighth generation of uh, Intel processors to be good. But uh, let's just wait and see. Like, I, I think... I think it's a great logical step. I'm happy they're moving to six cores, 12 threads. I think that's fantastic. To me, it really is going to be probably down to a lot of uh, a lot of variables on which one the pre which of these processes is best for you. I have a feeling a lot of gamers may be best served with the i7-8700K, but I have a feeling a lot of content users, people who perhaps don't find themselves able to justify Threadripper, but also want a lot of performance, may just be better off going with AMD. And then there's also some other questions like pricing. Okay, the 8700K, let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's roughly on par with the Ryzen 7s in terms of multi-threading. Let's just be say that it does for the moment. AMD just might have the processor advantage in terms of pricing. So if that's the case, obviously that's great for AMD. Unfortunately, it's just a kind of a waiting game for AMD as well, because really, it, it's kind of for AMD to fumble the ball right now, because the positive press, obviously, is really on AMD's side. Intel have really made some major screw-ups recently with the 300 series. I honestly feel that Intel should tell us why that has happened, if it was a genuine reason. Because if not, and I'm not saying it's not a genuine reason, I'm not saying that the 200 and 300 were artificially segmented, purposefully because you know of financial reasons but i feel that if it's not the case and intel really had technical reason they should tell us if not then we can only presume and i can't blame you because i'm presuming it as well that they did it pretty much because well new platform and intel go hand in hand in terms of legacy that kind of sucks but we'll just we'll have to wait and see how everything kind of unfolds over the next couple of months and really I feel the same thing exactly identical for the graphics because NVIDIA right now, of course, are the force to beat. AMD have a lot of goodwill with Vega. AMD have a lot of positive reception with Vega. There's a lot of excitement with Vega, so it's really down to them to capitalize it on that and to really push forward. So with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.